Okay, so um, today we're going to look at combinations. And this first question is going to give us some idea of uh, the difference between last day's topic, which were permutations, and today's, which are combinations. Okay, so let's take a look at these questions. The first one says, if five sprinters compete in a race, um, how many ways can the medals for first, second, and third place be awarded? Um, well, let's think about this, okay? If we're not sure and we want to go back all the way to basics, we can do the fundamental counting principle. Okay. What am I going to have on my page before I do any uh, math? How many? How many choices am I making here? Three. I'm making three choices, right? I have to choose someone for first, second, and third place. So this will be um, one, two, three blank slots. And what goes in the first slot? Yeah, there's five possible people to start with for gold. Once the gold medalist crosses, there's four people left. And then three left for uh, the la third place or, si or bronze. Okay. So this would be about 60. Can anybody else explain how else we could solve that problem? Five factorial divided by two factorial. Okay, and how else did we know that? You can take out the two at the two that's at the end. Um, what's the notation here? Remember? What we, what, how would you call that? Yeah, this is the permutation. So this is 5P2. So this is a permutation. Sorry, this is a 3, not a 2. This is a permutation of three objects in 5. That means from my group of 5, you can select any 3 you want and arrange them. Okay, so that's what a permutation is. If you take three objects out of the 5, how many arrangements can you make? Okay, so um, now let's take a look at the second question, which says, five sprinters compete in a race, and the fastest three qualify to form a relay team. How many different relay teams can be formed? What's the difference between this question and the previous question? It's still the three people finishing, right? But what's the difference? Uh, just a little louder, Michael, you're right. Different order. So, so expand on it. What about the order? Sorry? There can be doubles. Doubles. I'm not sure what you mean by doubles. Well, it, the, the same team can be repeated more than once. The same team can be reported more than once. Okay, so let's just, to keep it easy, we'll call it um, Alice, Bob, and Charlie. Okay? So here's my relay team. Alice, Bob, and Charlie. It could have been that it was Charlie, Alice, and Bob. It could also have been Bob, Alice, and Charlie, and so on. So how many different ways is the t it, will a single team be repeated? Yeah, there's three of them here, so that means there's going to be three factorial, or six ways, that team could be rearranged. So the only difference between the first, second, and third placements, and the team of three, is we don't care about the order in a relay team, right? You cross the line, hey, if you're third, it's still on the team, you made it, right? It doesn't matter that you weren't first. So because the order doesn't matter, we need to come up with a way to take those out. Any bright ideas of how we can remove those arrangements? Yeah, good, you're catching on. Can you say it a little louder? Just divide. That's how we're going to remove the extra uh, possibilities. So of the 60 that we had, okay, we want to remove all the teams where it would be Alice, Charlie, Beth, um, Charlie, Alice, or sorry, it's Bob, not Beth, and then Bob, Alice, Charlie. Uh, any of the different arrangements, we don't care about those. We don't want to overcount them. So. There's actually only 10 ways to do this, okay? Now, let me show you what that looks like. Um, that's, this is my permutation, which is how many ways can I select and arrange three objects? Then I have to remove all the different arrangements because in a team, I don't care what the uh, placement was. So this removes the amount of uh, duplicates, like Senia was saying. Um, from that total, okay? So what we call this, this is a combination. And the key difference between a combination and a permutation is order is not significant. So if you compare the two formulas here, this is the permutation formula. Here is the permutation formula again. 
The only difference is, because order's not significant, I'm removing all those cases where I've shuffled it around. Okay? So, for example, it'd be phenomenal if one day one of you was able to go to the Olympics and represent uh, uh, Canada or, I guess, any other country that you was great enough to... I won't be one of those bitter Canadians that's like, oh, you lived your whole life here and then you went and, to, you know, Korea offered you the chance and you took it? No, go for it. Just do it. If you ever have the chance. Life but, out if you get gold. Yeah? <laughs> We'll do it then, because Canada won't give you much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you'd be pretty choked if you crossed the finish and they went, oh, here, here, you all get bronze medals. It doesn't really matter if you were first, second, or third. Right? Like, that's like the way they play games in elementary school when they don't count scores. Right? You just, it doesn't matter. It does matter. Then it is a permutation, and that was uh, what we looked at last day. If it doesn't matter, it's a combination, and that's what we're going to practice today. Can anybody think of another time when... Um, for example, a combination might pop up. No, nothing? Is there any real examples of combinations, or is this just... Lottery numbers? Good example. Can you elaborate a little? Um, they only give you however many numbers, and then... <laughs> well, you're right. Lotto numbers are a combination, because if you picked 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... That's probably a bad choice, by the way. But if you pick those numbers, if those numbers came up, then you win. It doesn't matter if they pull them out of the uh, jackpot as 6, 3, 1, 2, 4, 5. As long as they come up, you win. The order doesn't matter. Anything else? Bingo, bingo yeah. Uh, bingo, I guess, then. It doesn't matter what order the, uh, the chips are played, as long as you end up getting all the ones to mark. Um, something more common that people do in my lunchroom all the time? Um, poker. Poker. Cards, yeah. Card games usually don't matter, right? Whatever you hold in your hand, you can rearrange it however you like because the order doesn't matter. So yeah, cards are going to use a lot of this. So uh, let's try and see if we can do this in the TI. Let's uh, take a look. Uh, this is how we would calculate it. It's right underneath your permutation button. So just want to uh, test it out by doing 8, choose 3. So... It's, again, it's identical to the permutation. It's just the one underneath it. Here's the steps. Um, if you come up with the right set of steps, you should see 56 for your answer. Okay. Now, while you're doing that, here's a couple things to note. First of all, this formula is provided as is the permutation formula is provided on the formula sheet. So don't stress about memorizing them, but if you had to do this, um, for example, we're doing 8 choose 3, it would be 8 factorial over 3 factorial, and then 8 minus 3 is 5 factorial. So the number I've put in brackets, this is removing, because I'm, uh, let's see here, 8 choose 3, this would be my permutation part right here. That's the part which is the permutation. This is the part that removes the duplicates, so I don't overcount. Okay? But anyways, that formula is provided to you for your exam, so don't worry about memorizing it. But it will come up in some of your questions. Okay, so there you go. The lotto is on there. Um, how many ways are there to, uh, let's see here, how many ways are there to play the 649? That is correct. Um, so, here's one of those things where you don't want to count them off by hand, but if you're wondering how many lotto tickets there are, your calculator can do this fairly quickly. 49 numbers, the order doesn't matter, pick six of them. So, this would be the amount of tickets you could possibly buy. So, anybody notice anything interesting about this? One in 14 million, yeah, that's your odds. Mark, what'd you say? If the jackpot, yeah, if the jackpot was like 15 million, then technically you could buy every lotto ticket and still profit because afterwards you're guaranteed a win and you've got $2 million, well, 1.1, I guess, left to spare. What's the only flaw in that plan? If someone else wins, you got to share. Yeah, so then, then it, but someone actually did this in the States. I can't remember, but I'm sure you can Google it and find out. Uh, the funny thing was they actually won all the uh, four out of fives, three, or sorry, four out of sixes, three out of sixes, five out of sixes, so they won more than the jackpot. 
but they had to orchestrate it. They had to hire people to go out and buy all the tickets. They had to phone ahead and say, hey, we're coming to buy 10,000 tickets from you. And they had to get a lot of organization, but apparently they did it and it worked. So 